The Indian market opens at a fresh record high. The Nifty crosses 22,600 for the first time ever, while the Nifty Bank moves above 48,000. Currently, both of them off the highs, even as the mid-cap index crosses that 50,000 mark for the first time. HDFC Bank gains on the back of a robust deposit growth in the first, fourth quarter. The deposits are up 7.5% sequentially. The CASA ratio also improves to 38.2% on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis. Avenue Supermarts also surges as the revenue for the company grows about 20% in the fourth quarter. Store edition also picked up with the company, adding 24 new stores compared to single-digit editions in the past three quarters. KEC International surges 12% on order bins worth 816 crore rupees across businesses. The total order intake for FI24 is around 18,100 crore rupees. In fact, in a short while from now, we'll have the management on our show to discuss this order win. Oil India slumps after the government increases windfall tax on petroleum crude to 6,800 rupees a ton from 4,900 rupees earlier. The windfall tax on ATF diesel and petrol continues to be nil. This is the fifth increase in windfall taxes since February. Hello and welcome to Chartbusters. I'm Rajat Rasuza. Joining me as always is Mangala Malu. And as we speak, well, the markets are as flat as can be. The pocket that still continues to party is the mid-cap index because that one is in the green. The breadth of the market as well is still favorable, though the markets have come off the high point of the day. You know, Mangalam, it's since the IPL fever is underway, you know, it's like the batsmen came out there, they got off to a cracker, and then, in fact, you know, the run rate has just dried up. And that's why we've come off the high point of the day. You mean to say the power playovers got, got over, over, and thereafter yeah. you had those smart, fast bowlers it coming did. in, the likes of Mayank Yadav, etc. But you know what? Maybe the market wants to take it easy ahead of two important events. One is the weekly options expiry today, and tomorrow, of course, is uh, the RBI policy outcome. So maybe they said, OK, let's not hit the extremes yet. Uh, we have hit a record high. We had milestones on uh, the Nifty as well as the mid-cap index as well. 50,000 50, on the mid-cap index and 22,600. Let's see where that goes. Well, talking about bowling, uh, Mayan caught a fantastic spell. And last night as well, you know, that delivery from Ishan. That, that Yorker that was Yorker, incredible. I mean, <laughs> that, that was some solace after the kind of whacking they were getting. But what a delivery. A Bending their delivery. back end, you know. But let's get back to the Let's market. get back. You know, the, the two extremes of the market we spoke about as well. Ishan Sharma, the senior experienced bowler. And then Mayank Yadav, who's a fresh upstart. Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, Shivangi Sarda of Motilal Oswal Financial Services joins in for a quick check on the IPL. No, Shivangi, the market. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. Thankfully, the market. Uh, good morning, Mangalam and Nigel. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. So, uh, we have seen that, you know, there has been a very strong uh, support base buying. Although uh, Nifty is witnessing some sort of profit booking decline, but then, of course, at higher levels, this is pretty much natural. And it is still, uh, you know, respecting its crucial support zones of 22,350. So this level would be important to watch out for. Uh, 22,350, uh, you know, it has to hold these levels for an up move uh, again to, you know, around 22,600 and then 22,750 levels. Overall, uh, you know, the series data have been quite positive and uh, the way the Nifty is panning out with so uh, stock-specific action across the sectors, uh, it's going to, uh, you know, likely to be on the uh, positive side uh, in the entire series. Now, talking about Bank Nifty, uh, you know, this uh, series, we've seen that the rollovers have improved uh, very significantly. And there has been, uh, uh, you know, consistent performance as we have seen in the last uh, three to four sessions. Uh, of course, a little bit profit booking decline, but then, of course, uh, it's uh, good levels to watch out for. So, uh, over here, we are recommending buy on decline. The expiry day point of view might be a little uh, range bound for Nifty, but Bank Nifty is definitely a buy on decline over here. Uh, the next targets which are coming out is 48 to 50 levels and with a stop near 47, 350 zones. Okay, sounding more optimistic on the Nifty Bank rather than the Nifty. We got that, uh, Shivangi. What about individual stocks? What are you looking at? So, so individual stocks, I'm looking at uh, NTPC, uh, which has recently come out of its higher band, its uh, hurdle zones, rather. And from the last three weeks, we've seen that there has been a very consistent, strong support base buying. Uh, RSI is showing a positive divergence here as well. And uh, this stock has, uh, you know, consistently uh, been uh, one of the performers in the entire space. 
uh, even in the previous uh, series, we've seen 86% rollover, which have been carried for this series. So overall, the stock is likely to remain positive and extend its move. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, by uh, recommendation over here with a target of 375 and a stop near 355 levels. The second pick on my radar is CUB. Now, uh, this entire space is also coming out of its underperformance and lacklust come out of its consolidative band. Uh, after, uh, you know, consistently uh, in moving in a very narrow range, this stock is now uh, set to perform uh, with, uh, of course, uh, tailwind of the sector. And the next targets are coming out to be 162 over here with a stop near 152 levels. All right, Shivangi, thanks a lot for joining in and giving us uh, those picks. Uh, AU, uh, we have City Union Bank as well as NTPC. On the other hand, we have AU Small Finance Bank as well, which is the top honours in the FNO space right now, up around 6% on the back of a strong update coming in. Let's uh, shift focus to a special segment where we get you a few ideas for profit coming in from our colleagues at Money Control Pro. We have with us Nitin Sharma, who's joining in to talk about a stock that he's been tracking closely. Nitin. Today's idea for profit is Intellect Design Arena, a BFSI-focused IT product company. Intellect offers software products and SaaS solutions to banks, insurance, and investment management companies. Global BFSI spending has been rising at a CAG of 9-10% to with a shift to cloud, AI, and SaaS, creating a large market for established third-party product companies such as Intellect Design. Within the BFSI space, shift to SaaS is picking up and this market expected to grow at a 30% CAGR for the next 4-5 to five years. Intellect has done heavy investment in a product development for years and those products are now mature, therefore do not require heavy investment going forward. Further, lower OPEX on the SaaS business and a rise in large deals put Intellect in a sweet spot to grow revenue at a double digit rate and achieve margins similar to the global players which enjoys above 30% margins. Intellect trades at a discount to its peers despite a better growth profile due to the ongoing transition. At the current market price, it trades at about 26 P of 24 times, which is reasonable, and should see a re-rating driven by the earning growth. Company plans to enter in the US market with increase in the number of deals as well as the size. We therefore recommend a buy. All right, Nathan, thank you for that. Uh, with that, we'll step into a short break, but as we do that, uh, here's something you must not miss out on. CNBC TV 18 presents India Exchange, where market experts and industry stalwarts will collaborate in insightful discussions on India's economic path and the evolving dynamics of the Indian market. We'll be mapping the macros with City India economists Samir and Chakravarti, catch a jugal bandi between uh, market veterans Manish Chokhani, Ramdev Agarwal, and we speak about the return of animal spirit within India Inc. as well. This will be a conversation with V. Vedyanathan of IDFC First Bank, KK Mistri and Manish Kejriwal of Kedara Capital. Chasing Alpha for market experts like uh, Nilesha of Kota, Prashant Kemka of White Oak and Capital, uh, uh, White Oak Capital and Ansh Tawakle of uh, ICICI Pro MF will be there as well. St stay tuned and do watch CNBC TV 18 today evening, 5.30 p.m. onwards. The NFT is splitting between green and red. NTPC has, of course, uh, moved higher. And Divi's Lab continues its move from yesterday as well. There was a double upgrade coming in from a brokerage firm. And that stock ended about 3% higher yesterday. And today as well, opened a little flat. But Divi's Lab has now moved to the high point of trade with a gain of almost 2 odd percent. Coal India is the other one, which is doing well from the frontline end as well. But uh, let's talk about some important uh, news that Hormaz has got, which is... The market, which has uh, seen a stellar run over the last four years. This morning when the Nifty crossed the milestone of 22,533, it had risen nearly three times from its COVID low of 7,511. Hormaz is here to decode this journey. Hormaz will talk about that. Nigel and I, we were there to see that 7,511. Nigel, who would have thought three years from then, it is three times. Well, uh, you know, if hindsight was foresight, then... Everyone would, be, were horses. <laughs> everyone would be millionaires. But what a journey, right? 
7,511. But let's not take uh, the spotlight away from Hormos. Hormos, you take it away. Well, you know, we are in a market where, in you know, an up days, any other normal course of business, but a down day is also not termed as a trend reversal anymore or things going all right, but an opportunity to buy more. But little did we know, as you said, on the 24th of March 2020, that we would be here standing four years later celebrating the Nifty scaling one new peak after another. And this happened a day after the nation went into a lockdown to combat the pandemic. The Nifty making a low of 75.11. Since then, the Nifty has tripled from those levels after it crossed 22.533 in today's session. Of course, the broader markets have been bigger outperformers. The mid cap and the small cap indices are up well over 300% as we speak. The Realty Index also is among the top sectoral performers with gains of over 400%. But the top sectoral gainer is none among your usual suspects, the ITs, the FMCGs, none of them. It's PSU banks. The stellar run in the state-run lenders has taken the PSU bank index higher by 440% from its March 24th lows. Now, what among the Nifty has moved since the most that day? Rani Enterprises stops the charts there and then comes Tata Motors riding on the back of a stellar run in 2021 and in 2023 and this year it's already up another 30%. And then comes the metal names, Hindalco, JSW Steel, Tata Steel and the infrastructure giant LNT also gaining over 400%. On the flip side, there are some stocks that have barely moved and HUL is a case in point there, just 12% in the last four sessions. Now as they say, the proof lies in the pudding and what more proof do we need to show the kind of market we are in that after after a 129% surge in four years, TCS features among the worst performers on the Nifty. Now, within the broader markets, we have 17 stocks in the mid-cap index that have risen over 1,000% or more. And CG Power tops that charts, followed by KPIT Tech, BSC, FACT, and even Punawala FinCorp. And cannot not talk about Suzlon in a market like this that features in this list as well, along with stocks like RVNL, Persistent Systems, and Tata LXC. Now, if there are 17 mid-cap stocks, there are 24 small-cap stocks as well that have gained over a thousand percent since March of 2020. There's the list here goes like Tata Tele, JBM Auto, Titagard, BLS International as well, along with Electra Green Tech, while stocks like Apar Industries, Ramkrishna Forging, Stages Networks also find a mention here. So there you have it, the Nifty 3X from its March 2020 lows, and hopefully there is more to come as well. Well, uh, Hormus, you started off the link by saying, uh, you know, who would have thought we are standing? You know, at that time, we didn't know what's going to happen the next day. Whether we would you know? stand or not. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, thanks a lot uh, for that. Well, let's move on then and let's shift focus to the IT pack now. Brokerage firm uh, JB Morgan has turned bullish on a couple of those IT stocks. Reema joins us to fill us in with more details. Reema? Thanks so much for that. You know, I like the title of the report. They're saying, how do you make money in IT now with the recovery having been pushed into the second half of the year? So JP Morgan has three ideas. There are three upgrades that they've done. One of them is a persistent system. They've upgraded it to an overweight. The second one is an upgrade on LTI Mindtree and also an upgrade on KPIT technology. But here, they've gone from being underweight to neutral. So the maximum upside from current levels is perhaps in persistent systems where the target price is 4,400 rupees. Now let's get to why they've upgraded these three individual names. On LTI Mindtree, it's an upgrade because the stock has underperformed. Since the company came out with their Q3 numbers, LTI Mindtree shares are down 22%, underperforming the broader market and even the Nifty IT index. Persistent Systems has been upgraded on the back of an earnings upgrade. Now, JP Morgan has raised the revenue estimates on Persistent Systems by 2%. They're forecasting a bigger margin expansion, and that's driving a 5% earnings upgrade. And finally, on KPIT Tech, the reason for the upgrade are the large deal wins, which, according to JP Morgan, will close in FY25, helping the company achieve a 20% earnings growth in both FY25 and even in FY26. Now, quick word on what they expect, you know, when it comes to Q4 numbers. They, they believe that the markets will largely ignore Q4 numbers. Now, FY25 guidance by Infi and HCL Tech, the annual guidance, could disappoint a few people if Infi comes out with 2 to 4 percent, if HCL Tech comes out by 4 to 6 percent. But here is the important line. JP Morgan says the given recent underperformance by NSC IT, they believe the downside from here on could be limited. Back to you. All right, Rima, thanks a lot for that. The downside could be limited. And how do you make money on the IT space? Well, the Report has some ideas for you, and we must put that up for us as well. Let's slip into a short break as we do that. Let's uh, share an announcement with you all. We're launching CNBC TV18's first ever live personal finance webinar. It's called CNBC TV18 Accelerate. It's the personal finance handbook 
with Sonia Shinoy, where she'll be joined by three well-known experts on Saturday, 11th May, 9 a.m. onwards. We'll be diving into everything you need to know to master your finances, which is uh, learn how to grow your wealth, be it insurance, tax savings, managing your portfolio, retirement planning as well. So lots to learn and lots to do as well. Whether you're in your 20s, 30s or even 40s, this live webinar is actually for you. There are limited seats, so don't miss this chance. Register now. What you can do is scan the code, the QR code which is there on your screen or log on to cnbctv18.com. We'll see you on the 11th of May. Well, KC International, that's the one that's buzzing in today's trading session, making fresh highs after they won an 816 crore order across various businesses. To help us understand more about that, we have Mr. Vimal Kejriwal, who is the managing director and the CEO of the company. Hi, Mr. Kejriwal, the first time we're speaking to you in this fiscal, and you have started it off in style. Yeah. Break up this 816 crores for us first, between civil, TND, as well as cables business. What's the split? It's a uh, morning, Megan. And basically, this is almost civil. It's almost 93, 94% is civil and very small part is cables and, and uh, TND. All right. So 93, 94% is civil. The rest is cable and TND. Um, you know, uh, if we look at uh, your order announcements and the FI24 order inflow guidance that you had given, you seem to have fallen a little short. Could that be because some of the orders have spilled into FI25? Um, what's your FI25 order inflow target? So, Manglam, you're right. We had talked about uh, 20,000 earlier, then we had said 18 to 20. Fortunately, at least we have crossed the lower level. We have reached 18,100. We have roughly around 5,000 crores in L1. A couple of them have got hit by the election code of conduct. So, they are with uh, PGSL and other people, which we were hoping that they will be released uh, before the election, but it's not been released. So, that's the, the slight setback. But I think we are okay otherwise. For next year, we are talking about around 25,000 crores of uh, order intake. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Kejriwal, you know, one of the reasons that you have also, you know, your inflow is only 18,000 crores in comparison to 20,000 crores is because you were making this point that you want to be selective and you want to focus yeah. on profitability as well. You know, that's the analyst community has understood that well. So, you know, what is the margins on this 18,000 crores approximately? And also, you know, we have been covering for the last few days, aluminium prices, copper prices, all of them, they are off the blocks in style. That could hurt your business. What is the margin outlook should we be working with for FY25? And is that at risk? So, Nigel, you, you are right. We have become very selective in our order intake, minimum sizes, cash flows. I think we had a couple of bad years earlier, so we became very careful on that. So that's one of the major reasons why we are at 18, not at 2022. Uh, as far as the middle prices are concerned, as of now, it's not hurting us because all the current orders and etc. are fully hedged. Okay, where, where it can hurt is, you know, an industry like cable and all that, where with the copper prices, annual prices going up. Sometimes we see a scale down of, uh, you know, ordering etc. by some of the user industries, they would like to wait. But I think it's the prices have been very volatile. I don't see any any significant impact uh, anywhere. In fact, what happens is the other way around is uh, in the newer orders, if the prices are higher, your your values go up and your order sizes and everything goes up. And typically, since we are at a margin percentage of the value, uh, the mm -hmm. the margins can also actually go up in absolute terms. Okay. So, so, so you're basically you're telling us that this commodity price increase is not a risk to your uh, profit profile, uh, the way you see it. Then give us a guidance on margins for the coming year. And by when do you go back to 9% margins? So, uh, margins for next year, we have just been talking about between 7.5 to 8. Hmm. And we have said that FI26, we should be between 9 to 10. All right, 9 to 10 for FI26 with 7.5 to 8%. You haven't changed much uh, from what you had earlier said as well. In the fourth quarter as well, you said you would do margins of yeah. close to around 7% uh, with the annual revenue growth of 15% in FI24. I just wanted some granularity on, you know, your non-TND business or, uh, or rather uh, your non-civil business. Railways, what's your outlook for the next year? Cables and also... The EV charging cable uh, that you're talking about, 
how are they likely to grow in the next couple of years so cables is doing very well we 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 do think that next year cables will do still better and one of the reasons why we are saying that is we have also started working on our uh, aluminum conductor facility which should get up by quarter 2 so that will add you know on an annual basis almost 600 crores of revenue so cables will do well ev charging is still on to be the cable part is still in, in its infancy so I, i don't see it growing uh, uh, too much railways has been a bit of a disappointment in terms of the of our line of business where we are more on infrastructure building new lines electrification and the government emphasis was more on you know uh, vande bharat trains and station redevelopment so i think the our view internally is that post elections i think the government will change tracks and start spending more on infrastructure so we do think that uh, the uh, uh, we'll see a lot more tenders on railway infrastructure railway safety etc coming up so hopefully by q3 q4 our railway order book uh, should start building up significantly okay all right um, mr kejriwal you know, we'll talk in further detail when we, your numbers are out your quarterly numbers are out but i recall you telling us that i think the net debt number will reduce by roughly around i think 500 crores uh, in quarter 4 has that happened and your net working capital days as well you were guiding for 15 to 20 days improvement has that happened also so i don't want to talk too much about fy24 but i think we are say, i can only say that we are on track uh, on our debt numbers okay and what about for the coming year uh, so let's not talk about fy24 fy25 give us the guidance right on board debt as well as net working capital days so fy25 we don't expect the absolute debt to go down because what will happen is that we are talking about a 15% growth in revenue so we hmm. will need to borrow borrow more for to fund the the extra 15 let's say almost 3000 crores of revenue but we expect that the absolute debt will remain well and also interest as a percentage of our debt to come down by hmm. at least 50 basis 50 basis points on account of our working capital improvement and hopefully if rbi does something and the rates start coming down then that could be an additional uh, reduction in our interest cost all right the working capital days you're going to give us uh we should be between 100 to 110 Okay, hundred to hundred and ten. We'll take that and speak to you in more granularity in a lot more detail after your fourth quarter numbers as well. Thank you so much for joining in. From what we have so far, fifteen percent revenue growth for the next year, seven and a half to eight percent margins, with them moving to nine to ten percent in FY twenty six, twenty five thousand crore worth order inflow, and an improvement in working capital days to about hundred to hundred and ten. That's KC International stock up thirteen percent. With that, we are out of time on this edition of Chartbusters. Thank you so much for watching, Nigel, me, the entire team. Uh, stay tuned. Trading Guard comes up next.